What's up guys, John Macaluso here with Sticks and Crits. Today, I'll be reviewing Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4. It's been a while since we've had a really good Spider-Man game, so let's go ahead and dive into whether or not Insomniac does the character justice. Now there's been one major feature in every Spider-Man game that gamers prioritize over all else. Web swinging. In Spider-Man, you'll swing, and swing, and swing, then you'll swing some more. Traversing Manhattan has never felt so good in any game. I've caught myself traveling from one end of the city to the other just because I could. In fact, you can go anywhere in the game without touching the ground. That, and the way Spider-Man moves while traversing the city really makes you feel like the webhead. Insomniac has done a really good job in building a beautiful version of Manhattan for you to explore throughout three different times of day. Dusk, day, and night. All three times look really great and include some light weather here and there, but there isn't an actual day and night cycle. It's a really small thing, but something I was definitely disappointed about. After finishing the main story, you'll have the option to switch between the three times. One thing that I did really love about Spider-Man is people's reaction to him on the streets. When Spider-Man is walking amongst the crowds, people will say things and sometimes even approach to shake his hand or give him a high five. It's another small feature that adds to the experience of being Spider-Man. I also really like that there are other Marvel locations throughout the city. Climbing up Avengers Tower and swinging past the Sanctum Sanctorum is really cool and adds another layer to Insomniac's Marvel Universe. Insomniac also does a great job making you feel like Spider-Man during combat. It's very similar to the Batman Arkham games, but much faster with cooler abilities. Enemies, for example, stick to walls when webbed up and thrown at any surface. It's a really great way to thin out a large group of bad guys and looks and feels really good. Other than punching, kicking, and webbing in combat, you'll have access to some pretty cool tech. It wouldn't be an Insomniac game without some red weapons, right? One of my favorites is a spider drone that continuously shoots at enemies. Like traversing Manhattan, fighting bad guys was something that I found myself doing just because I could. In addition to combat, you'll have stealth missions. Stealth in Spider-Man is also pretty similar to the Arkham games, but not as tense and a whole lot easier. All of the tech that you use in combat can be used while in stealth, now I did like the stealth missions in Spider-Man, but I often found myself trying to go into combat when given a choice. Sometimes I would do a mixture of the two. So the story in Spider-Man begins with Peter Parker in his mid-twenties, so he's been Spider-Man for a while and has already fought some of his most famous enemies. He's also graduated from college and has an on and off again relationship with Mary Jane. I like the fact that Insomniac chose to place Peter Parker at this stage in his life. He's experienced and more importantly we don't have to go through another Uncle Ben origin story. Now I hate spoilers so I'm just going to tell you guys straight up that I really enjoyed the story. The thing that I liked most about the story was seeing the Peter Parker part of Spider-Man. Every good Spider-Man story shows the conflict in Pete's life when he has to juggle the responsibilities of being Peter Parker and Spider-Man. Insomniac's story does this incredibly well. My least favorite aspect of the story is some of the stealth missions. I can't really say much more without spoiling some stuff, but you'll know what I'm talking about once you play it. Now on to my biggest complaint about the game, it was just way too simple to 100% it. I got the game's platinum in two days and both days I worked and did other things. This includes all side quests completed, all collectibles collected, all costumes bought, all abilities learned, all crimes completed, and all gadgets unlocked. I actually got the Platinum Trophy without having all of the costumes and secret landmarks which was kind of surprising and a little disappointing. You also don't really need all of the golds on the challenges that pop up in the game. I may have just gotten really good at the game but I feel like it was just way too easy. It doesn't really feel like as big an accomplishment as other Platinums do. And now the moment you guys have all been waving for. I really love Spider-Man. Swinging around Manhattan, stopping crimes and fighting bad guys and playing through the story were all tons of fun. The lack of a true day and night cycle, some of the stealth missions in the story and how easy the game is to platinum were all disappointing things for me but not enough to really impact how good the actual game is. Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4 gets a 9.5 out of 10. For more on all things video games and tabletop games, check out Six and Cricks on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook and have a good one.